This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be silent before him. To the wonderful and grand and wonderful faithful God, we give you thanks this morning, Father. Bless the saints. Bless the word of God that will be preached. Bless the worship team, Father. Bind us together in love and compassion. We're giving you thanks, Father, for the, this God who is faithful. He who has made promises is always faithful. So we're giving you thanks, God, for this day. We will now have a scripture by De walking Deacon Randy McCray, followed by a prayer by Deacon John Good in that order. Let the words say amen. Amen. Thank you. Please rise, everyone. Today, we're reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 35, 36. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great repentance of reward. For ye have need of patience that, after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. The word have the word of the Lord has already been blessed. Thank you. And only God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We, your children, thank you. We thank you for that rain angel that watched over us last night. We thank you for your touch. Your touch of love that woke us to another one of your glorious days. We thank you for traveling mercy and traveling grace. We thank you for the welcoming at the door of your church. We thank you for your church. We thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. For this is the day the Lord has made. If we had a thousand tongues and a thousand languages to try and thank you for all the things you do for us, that still would never be enough for all that you do for us. We thank you for the sky. Thank you for the moon. But most of all, we thank you for your son. Your son who made to wash away our We thank you. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands and give God glory. Come on, clap, 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 clap. Come on, somebody honor the Lord today. God, we praise your name and we give you all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, continue to lift your worship. Come on, don't let it die down. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad, and it will find every reason to give God praise. Hallelujah. He's a great God, and he's greatly to be praised. He's worthy of everything today. How many know he's worthy of everything? So we came to say how great is our God. Hallelujah. You can join in with us. That's all right. <laughs> He's a great God still. He's a great God. We're just going to go with the flow. Come on, put your hands on it right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Oh, 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 o
how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Come on, put your hands on the right here. Come on, come on, come on. We came to give you praise, God. If you know you serve a great God, come on. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. How great is our God. Sing with me, oh, is our God. Oh, we'll see how great is our God. Come on, one more time, put your hands together, come on. You're a great God, yes. You're a great God, yeah. Oh, one more time, how great is our God. Sing with me, oh, is our God. Oh, we'll see how great you are, how great is our God. I lift my hands to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. Now, will you praise in the name? Say, I lift my hands to give you glory. I lift my hands, yeah. To give you praise, and I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord, and I will praise you. I lift my hands because you've been so good. I lift my hands to give you praise. I'll praise you, Lord. Because you're a good God. God's are worthy of my praise. God's are worthy of my worship. I gotta praise you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so kind. I gotta praise your name. I gotta lift you up. I'll praise you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together right here. Come on. Come on, God, we'll praise you. We'll lead you. We'll give you glory. Hey, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy of my worship. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy of my Lord, I love you. I've got to praise you. I've got to praise you. I've got to praise you. You've been so good to me. Nobody can do what you do. I'll praise you, Lord. I owe you my praise. I owe you my praise. I'll praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord. How 
how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Come on, can we lift that up in the room? Say how great, how great is our God. Sing with me, oh, is our God. Go to the next part. I like the next part because it says, uh, You're the name above all names. You are worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Come on, help me sing. Come with me. The, you're the name. You're the name. You're a great God. 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 Come on, have a say. You're a great. You're a great God. 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 How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great. How great is our God. Now come on, clap your hands, open your mouth, and give your great God great praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God, we say that you are great. You do wonderful things. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. I know I didn't put this in the... There is no one else like you. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. Come on, how many of you can testify this morning and say that there is no one else like you. Come on, look up, say you are great, you, you are great, you do miracles. There is none like you. him in the world come on come on you've experienced the hand of God on your life and you can say that there's nobody like him 
and all the earth. So we say we're free worshipers today. Anybody free? Anybody free? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So we take the limits off our worship today. I ask that you take the limits off and lift your hands and open your mouth. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Lord, I'm free. Hey, free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Say, Lord, I'm free. Come on, it's easy. It's a free to dance. Free to lift my hands. Say, Lord, I'm free. Say, Lord, I'm free to dance. Lift my hands. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. Say free to dance, free to lift my hands. Come on, anybody free? Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm free to dance, free to lift my hands. Come on, if you're free, say, Lord, I'm free. Free to dance, free to lift my hands. Say, Lord, I'm free. Say, Lord, I'm free. Free to lift my hands. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. I need you to declare. Say, I'm a free worshiper. Yeah. I'm a free worshiper. Say, Lord, I'm free. And I like the next part. It says, Yeah, thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. Hey, thank God I'm free. And I'll never be bound again. Come on, help me say, say, thank God I'm free, and I'll never be bound. God, we thank you for freedom. Hey, say, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. 
I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, push up the blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, let me say, I am free, I am free, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, I'm no longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. resting. It's just a blessing. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am free. No more chains holding me. Sickness can't hold me. No self-esteem can't hold me. Come on, lift that. I'm no longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it again. Say, I am free. I am free. It's only for the free people. Come on. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. I know some of y'all still bound. That's why you can't sing it. Resting, just just say praise the Lord, 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 Lord, I praise you. If you're free, come on, clap your hands if you're free. Come on, you ought to give God some praise in the sanctuary. If you're grateful that you are free, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm any free folks in the sanctuary today? Oh, come on. I, I thought I thought I was in the right place. You got a testimony that I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free, amen. Let's get ready now to receive our welcome by Sister Marsha Cowell in the hospitality ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Again, as Pastor said, my name is Sister Marsha Cowell, and I am a member of the hospitality ministry. If we have any first-time visitors, I ask that you please stand. Amen. We all here. I'm glad you're here today on this Sunday to our online visitors. We welcome you into the sanctuary. We are so glad that God has spared our life one more time because he didn't have to do it. So we need to give him praise for I am free. For the Lord said that I am free and I am free indeed. We have a little song that we sing. If you haven't greeted your neighbor at this point, we have a song that we sing. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So easy because we are on one accord. So we're going to sing this song for you and greet your neighbor. And so let so glad to see them. Amen. Come on, man, Allah, you know what we do. Get up and show somebody some love. Simple song says the Jesus in me 
loves the Jesus in you. Everybody say, the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So we The Jesus in you, the Jesus in me. So easy, it's so easy, it's so easy, it's so easy to love. Love the Jesus in you, so easy. Oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. So easy to love. Yeah, the Jesus in me. Love the Jesus in you. Jesus in me testimony that since the Lord came into my life, ain't it easy to love people, ain't it easy to love people, come on, in you. since Jesus came into my life, now I see, now I see, the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, love the Jesus in you, Everybody say, oh, 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 so easy to die. Hallelujah. We pray that you already felt welcome when you came into the sanctuary.
Uh, we're grateful you could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to worship with us here today. So I want you to know how grateful we are, and we are excited to have you here worshiping with us live in the sanctuary of the Mount Olive Baptist Church in beautiful Brownsville, Brooklyn. Let's prepare now for our ministry updates and announcements from Walking Deacon Randy McCray. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. God bless. God bless everyone. Ministry updates, Sunday, July 28th, 2024. Please keep the following persons uplifted in prayer. Mother Richardson, Mother Battle, Mother Jurgen, Jeanette Stevens, Debbie Barbara Banks, Virginia and Ernest I, Janice and Milton Brown, Cassandra and Imani Dariano, Valerie Montgomery Lamb, Beverly McCann's Gent, Lula Carrier, Carlton Hill, excuse me, I got a brain lock here. Juanita, Juanita Lloyd, Mary White, Tammy Meadows, Father Wydell, and James McLeod, also Denise Thomas. We want to keep Deacon John Good family in prayer in the passing of his grandnephew, Kingston Waddell. Our prayers are also with the Griffin family in the passing of overseer Demetrius Griffin. Ministry updates, Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. Noonday Bible study on prayer line and 7.30 evening Bible study on Zoom and Facebook. Thursday, August 1st, 2024, 7 p.m., Community Corners will be on their prayer line. For the month of August, we will not, I repeat, not be having our 8 a.m. Our Power Bible Study PhDT service, Monday's, excuse me, Men's Bible Study, Youth Successful Saturday, Youth Choir Rehearsal, and New Members Class. All will resume in the month of September. It is time to purchase the Sunday School Commentaries for the fall lessons. Please see Sister Beverly McCullough. The course is $25 for the commentaries and $15 for the flashlights. Please order by Sunday, August 4th, to be ready for the September 1st lesson. Tickets for Marsha DuPont's birthday celebration is available through Zelle. That would be Mount Ali at AOL.com, or you could just see Sister McCray. Final ticket for purchase is August 19th. Please note for the new flyer, the change of date, and the change of venue. <coughs> Finally, the Pulpit Office Supply Ministry is sponsoring a trip to Sight and Sound to see the play Daniel, December 28th, 2024. Please see the flyer for payment schedule or any member of the club. Thank you, everyone, and may our God bless the Mount Holly family. Amen, amen. We thank God for our ministry updates and announcements. Just want to reiterate a couple things. During the month of August, during the month of August, we're going to call it our Sabbath giving everybody a Sabbath. Now, this don't count for the people who don't normally come to Bible study, don't normally come to church anyway. I ain't talking to you. Amen. But for the rest who normally come, I want to give you during the month of August a time of rest. Uh, handle your business. Enjoy yourself. We're going to continue the prayer line. We're going to continue the prayer line. Uh, but pretty much everything else will be postponed for the month of August. That's our youth meetings, our rehearsals. I want to give you some time because September we got a lot of work to do when we get back. Amen. Amen. So I want to be, I want everyone to be refreshed and revived for what comes after the uh, summer months. We're so glad, as always. I told you every time she's here, God acknowledged we were praying for Mother Richardson. Mother Richardson is here today as well. We thank God, our 97 year young member. Uh, I need y'all to be in special prayer, special prayer uh, for Mother Battle and Mother Jurgen. Mother Battle and Mother Jurgen. I believe God that we're gonna have all of them back again. 
uh, here in the sanctuary. So God got the final word, but I'm asking you to be in prayer with me. What a powerful scene it would be to have all the mothers, to have our father, our deacons, our deaconess, our missionaries in full attendance on this first Sunday. So I'm asking you to be in prayer. I don't know uh, what's going to happen, but we're going to keep on praying. Amen? Amen. Keep on believing. As we get to the word today, one of the things that's going to really challenge us is about do we believe what God said? Do we really believe what God said? Do we really believe what we heard from the Lord? Do we believe what we heard from the Lord? So we want to be focused on that throughout the month of August. Uh, last but certainly not least, uh, I want to talk about the party for Sister DuPont. This is what I want to do. I know that the cost is a bit much, so you can do a $20 deposit today. Not yet, Emma. i got to do offering. Yeah, $20 deposit today, and then you can pay $25 a week for the next six weeks. If you want to go and you haven't been able to, a $20 deposit today, you can pay $25 a week for the next six weeks, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of and you're accounted for. Amen? Amen. Because I really want people to go. Also, we're going to be having a sign-up for a bus uh, that may leave from the church. I need to know how many people so we can reserve the buses. want to be mindful as people are traveling to Long Island. I believe that it's just good and nice to be nice to people. Amen. Amen particularly one who has gone above and beyond the call of duty for so many different people. Don't make me start telling the stories of how many of y'all know she's lent money to. Don't make me tell it all, y'all. I know. I'm, I'm her secondary accountant. Amen. So I know because if something happened to her, I got to make sure we get that money. Amen. Amen. So, so how many times has she gone above and beyond? She's bought so many clothes for people pay for trips, hotels, and help people. And this is one time we get a chance. This is one time. One time we get a chance. I think we ought to go above and beyond the call of duty for someone we ain't never had to question where she was on a Sunday morning. Ain't never had to worry about her commitment or dedication to this church. So this ain't to put nobody else down to lift her up. It's just recognizing who she is and what she's done. So I'm asking those who can and who will, we got to sell these tickets. You've already responded. But I'm asking if you know someone who has been impacted by Sister DuPont, to reach out to them as well. I'm really asking the church to be the co-host for this party with me. I want it to be something she deserves. It's going to be a Bridgerton theme. If you ain't got Bridgerton, just wear a white shirt and some black slacks. No, I'm just playing. Amen. Do something, y'all. Act like you're coming to church, but we want to have, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. I promise God showed us so much favor on this. You want to be there. Uh, so I believe that concludes all of our announcements. Let's welcome Brother Travis, who's our, our organist today, who came in. We thank God for him making his way. Want to keep Sister Mary right in prayer. Somebody brought it to my attention. Want to keep Sister Mary right in prayer. Want to keep Sister Allen in prayer, who was with us last week. Uh, also want to keep, again, I said Mother Jurgen, uh, and I got a message from Debbie Barber Banks. She sent me a message. I did not know she still was in New York. For some reason, I thought she was somewhere else. So I got to go see her. So I need somebody to help me to, to facilitate that so that I can go see Sister Barber. And that's my fault, my, my bad. Sometimes we assume things, and if you don't ask to verify, you know what happens when you assume. You just left with the first part. Amen. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to leave all my, my, my scholars to figure that out. Amen. So I want to apologize uh, for that. That was an oversight on my part. All right. Well, listen, I promise y'all we're about to take offering. We should be able to get out of here by 12, 12, 15. All right. I'm going to make a deal with y'all. I get y'all out by 12, 15. I got a special request at the end of service. Deal? They said no deal. All right, y'all messed it up. We'll see. We'll see. All right, as we get ready, it's offering time. I can't hear you. It's offering time. I cannot grow. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, poured out into our bosom. Into our bosom. This is what I believe God has taken us to another level of spiritual maturity. Another level of spiritual maturity. And in that uh, spiritual maturity, we want to have the faith that corresponds with what the Lord has asked of us. That's the tithe. It's $1 for every $10. The Lord asks for less than the government, but he gives you better protection than the government. I can't get no help up in here. Think about how much you pay on a monthly basis for your insurance. And the first chance they get, they're going to drop you. I can't get no help up in here. Think about all of these other things that we invest in. We pay money for protection and all of that. Don't live in a flood zone and let it flood. You done paid insurance for 15 years. 
And all of a sudden, they want to play deaf, blind, and stupid. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. All of these things that we do to ensure our earthly security, our earthly insurance, how much more should we trust in God? And that really is a challenge, the presentation that I am laying at your feet today. If you can trust God in every er other area of your life, I'm challenging you to trust God with your finances. And this is what I have seen time and time again. I'm not here to promise that God is going to give you all the desires of your heart. That's stuff you got to work for. Can I be honest? God ain't never promised, I don't think, that you're going to be a millionaire just because you go to church. You want to be a millionaire, go to school. Write a book. Create an invention. Get a job. Help me, somebody. <laughs> Start a business. But this is what the Lord did promise, that I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. This is what the Lord did promise in Malachi chapter 3. This is what I love about the Lord. He said, trust me with the 10 and I'll protect your 90. I wish I had some help. How many of us can admit that our insurance is more than our tithes? Think about your home insurance. Don't put your hand up. Your life insurance, car insurance. Y'all know we live in one of the most car, uh, high expensive car. I don't care what Geico say. They ain't that cheap. <laughs> they ain't that cheap, y'all. Think about all that we do because we're trying to trust in everything and everybody else to protect cars that are going to break down, cars that are going to have accidents, homes that can catch fire, that can be flooded, that, that can be vandalized, burglarized, all of these other things. Why not protect your spiritual life? Why not do what God has said? That's really the only, only challenge that I want to present to you today. Can you take that next step of trusting God? The tithe is 10%. The offering is above and beyond the tithe. Some of us can admit God has been so good to me. I got three people who would. Some of us, maybe the rest of us to catch on, but God has been so good to me, I can't even put a monetary value on it. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. The number one cause of bankruptcy in America is medical expenses. If you shouldn't be grateful for anything else, that I'm in the sanctuary today. Y'all ain't going to help me. I saw some people in the hospital this week with tubes up their nose. Y'all ain't going to help me. I, I went to the hospital to pray for somebody who didn't even know that I was there, but I was praying. You don't think I'm going to give God the best that I have if for nothing else than what he's kept me from? Our giving is an act of worship. Gratitude and appreciation for all that the Lord has done. Now, what you're going to give is between you and God, between you and the Lord. And let's get ready to pray. Lord, we thank you that what's in our hands started in your hand. We thank you for our spiritual maturity to recognize that 10% is a small thing for you. It ain't really about the tithe as much as it's about our budgeting and our prioritization of you Lord how can we expect you to prioritize us in our house and you are last thought how can we expect you to prioritize us in our house when your house gets my leftovers your house gets my George Washington's that's dollars for those who don't get it your house doesn't get what it rightfully deserves so Lord help us to have a healthy reverence and respect of you and your house, that we may see our house be blessed. And Lord, this week, I challenge us to look at Malachi chapter 3 and look at the 10 reasons God gave us to trust him with the tithe. And we thank you now, Lord, that you are faithful and you will fulfill on every one of your words. And you said, try me now in this. Try me. Lord, we're trying you. And we thank you that we do not try you in vain, but you will perform according to your word. And we thank you now, O God. It's in the name of Jesus we do pray and say amen, amen, and amen. Again, if you're online, four ways to give. You can join us in worship. Cash app, give the Fizel, or in an envelope. You can mail it, 1698 St. Mark's Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11233. Let's get ready for our praise and worship a team to lead us now as we... Starting in the balcony, marching around. Starting in the balcony, marching around. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. 
free, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Don't be me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, and with thanksgiving, oh, 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 I'll be, I'll be sanctuary for you. Hope we let me, yeah, pure and holy, try. Yes to your 
say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Yes to your way. We say yes, I'll obey. Yes, I'll obey. We say yes, 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 yes,
So I'm praying the second point of this lesson will really help us to challenge. Are we focusing on the right things according to God's rubric? And we'll do the medical moment after. I'm just going to flow right into it. Amen. We are going to do the medical moment. So I'll be finished at 1210. If the Lord says the same. Amen. Let's go to the slides, Brother Julius. I just want to walk through all of the slides. We're going to go through all of the slides, and then we'll go through. Amen. Our sermon goals, understanding the seven tools for evaluating our spiritual maturity. Got three goals today. Number one, I want to give us seven tools to hopefully evaluate our spiritual maturity. Second one, understand the context of the question of Jesus and the response of the disciples to better understand the frustration of Jesus. That Jesus was frustrated. We want to understand why he was frustrated. What happened in the text? I don't know about y'all. I want to avoid frustrating Jesus. Huh? You ever dealt with somebody who was frustrated with you? Lord have mercy. I ain't got to say nothing else. I ain't got to say nothing else. Then the third thing, understanding the what Jesus would have us focused on. Understanding the what Jesus would have us focused on. Focusing on spiritual things of God versus the natural things of the world. Spiritual things of God versus the natural things of the world. Next slide. This is going to be our text. We're going to read Mark 8, 1 through 10. Next slide. 11 through 21. Next slide. Then verse 17 through 18 is what we're really going to focus on. And I've underlined in verse 17 and 18 the key words. Reason, not yet perceive or understand. Heart still hardened, eyes but don't see, ears but don't hear, and then finally remembrance. Remembrance. Go to the next slide. Then I break it down. These three things. Next time you go through something, I want you to check your heart, check your mind, your heart, and your natural senses in remembrance. Your mind, reasoning, perception, understanding, then a hardened heart is an unbelieving and unconvinced heart. What else God got to convince you of? When you go through things to so trust and believe that indeed he will keep his word. And then the natural senses and remembrance. God gave you eyes to see, ears to hear, and remembrance. The ability to remember what God has done. Amen? Let's go back to the text. Let's get ready to read now. Mark chapter 8, verses 1 through 21. You can stay seated today for the New King James translation. We're doing things a little differently. Uh, I want to get through, get through. Several people came and said they got stuff to do after church. So since y'all stuff is more important than God, let me go ahead and rush. <laughs> I'm only halfway joking. I wasn't offended. I understand. Sometimes you got stuff to do. Amen. But y'all ain't going to accuse me of being the reason you didn't get to where you had to go on time. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Don't nobody get offended. Amen. You can't wear your sleeves on your shirt in this church. <laughs> You're going to get your feelings hurt. And we don't even mean nothing. <laughs> don't even mean no harm. Amen. All right. Mark chapter 8, verse 1 through 10. This is what, again, the New King James translation. It's on your screen. If you can see that far, it's a little easier for me. I look at the back. It's a little easier. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. Jesus calls the disciples and said to them, I have, what's that C word, y'all? Compassion. Compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way. For some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, how can one satisfy these people? with bread here in the wilderness. And he asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. They also had a few fish, and having blessed them, he said to set them before, he said to set them also before them, speaking of the fish. Verse 8, this is the miracle. So they ate, not just did they eat, y'all. Y'all reading what it says right there? They ate and were still hungry? 
They ate and their stomachs were still growling. They ate and side eyes was looking at Jesus like, Jesus, you being selfish. You being stingy. No, the Bible says they ate and were what? So much so that they took up how many large baskets? Seven large baskets of leftover frag. Leftover. See, only with the Lord can you get everything you need and have some leftovers. I wish I, I'm preaching already. Amen. That's the type of God we serve. Amen. And seven leftovers, a basket of, of leftover fragments. Verse 9, now those who had eaten were about 400, 4,000. 40 people, 4 people, 4,000. And he sent them away, immediately got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha, Dalmanatha, Manutha. Amen. My grandfather has a funny expression. I don't ever get caught up on grammar too much and things like that. I try to respect people's names and learn how to pronounce people's names and things like that. I want to show proper reverence. My grandfather has some. If somebody walked up to you and says, I is going to shoot you or I am going to shoot you, you still get the point. <laughs> you still get the point. Amen. Somebody get that on the way home. I is or I am, but you know what's about to go down. You keep acting up. Amen. Don't get bogged down and bothered by those things. Let's go back. This is where I want us to focus. Remember what just happened in verse 1 through 10. Remember what just happened in 1 through 10, and then now look at 11 through 21, particularly verses 13 through 21. Then the Pharisees came out. So imagine that the miracle happened on a Monday, and then this happens on a Tuesday. Or somewhere there about a Tuesday the next day he's having this conversation then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him seeking from him a sign from heaven testing him but he sighed deeply in his spirit and said why does this generation seek a sign assuredly I say to you no shine no sign shall be given to this generation focus in now saints of God and he left them speaking of the Pharisees getting into the boat again with his disciples departing to the other side this is where it gets interesting. Now, the disciples have forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, is it because we have no bread? Jesus upset with us. He, he, he's, he's, he's talking to us. Is it because we ain't got no food, no natural things, no bread? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, why do you, number one, reason? Why do you think it's because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor yet understand? Y'all ain't got it yet. Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Think on, think on that. And do you not remember? Verse 18. Verse 19, this is the first, this is something that he's, he's calling to their remembrance. When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, what? Twelve. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said to him, seven. So here the frustration of Jesus come glaring through the text. So he said to them, how is it you do not understand? How is it you do not understand? I think we could just sit on that question for a moment. We can sit on that question for a moment. How is it that with the mind you got, the heart that I've given you and I'm working on, 
You got access to five senses. We're only talking about two right now. With everything you have seen. I'm trying to wake some of y'all up. With everything that you've heard. Yet you still, still don't understand. Still don't understand. I, I, I can hear the frustration of Jesus. Come on, saint of God. Can't you hear it in your ears? Just, just imagine the voice of Jesus as his voice echoes across the ages. Speaks to you right now in the stillness of your mind. How is it you still, still, don't understand how much I love you. Still don't understand how much I care about you. Still don't even remember all the things I did for you that you couldn't do for yourself that you didn't even know needed to be done. Is that anybody else's testimony? They won't maturity and hindsight allow you to look back over your life and recognize the Lord kept you even when you didn't know you needed to be kept. Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Let me talk to some folks who don't mind telling the truth. Have you ever been somewhere and found out when you left it got shot up? Y'all ain't talking to me in this place. Have you ever been someplace and found out it was a super spreader, but thanks be unto God you didn't know. That's COVID talk for y'all who don't know. But, but, but God was keep. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You was riding in the car with somebody who got diagnosed the next day, but yet you still doing okay. Y'all ain't hearing me in this place. God is saying, how much more do you need to see before you start to get this thing? I want you to think back on your life. What gets you frustrated when you have done everything you can to show who you are? Everything you can to show up the best way possible every single day. You've been on your job, showing up on time, going above and beyond the call of duty. And your supervisor got the nerve to call you in and question your commitment and debt. Matter of fact, I was here when you wasn't here. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm the one who kept you from getting fired because you didn't know what you was doing. You know what it is to be frustrated because people just don't get it. To have done everything you can. Showed up the way you know to show up. Said the right things. But yet after all of that experience. For some reason or another. I hear the voice of Jesus echoing across the ages. Raising that question. Do you still not understand? Do, do, do you not understand? I got... 15 minutes left. So y'all got to say amen and help me get out of here. Amen. Amen. Y'all woke now. They don't tell me y'all know how to preach to my congregation, to my people. I know how to get you. I'm coming for you. Amen. Couple things, couple things. I'm going to give it to you real quick. Julius, can you go to the slide? Let's just skip ahead to the one in the text where it breaks down, uh, where it breaks down and underlines verse 17 and 18. 17 and 18. So I want us to get this point first. The text where it breaks down 17 and 18. Go to your Bibles, if you will, in 17 and 18. There are seven things that I pulled out from this text that I want to give us. Seven things. 17 and 18. We're going to look at this first, then we're going to go to the next slide. Because I want you to see where I got it from. I don't want you to accuse me of making it up. I've been praying for the Lord to kind of show me some things. I want to help create some more lists and some more structures about our Christian living about to, 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 to evaluate if we're making progress. I don't want to just be going to church. I don't want to just be preaching and don't see no progress. So I've been praying. So the first one is, why did you reason because you have no bread? All right? When you reason something, you, you, that's your rationalization, your process, your thinking that, that I reason that one plus one equals two. You, you're adding stuff up in your mind, making connections, right? First, that they reason on natural things when God was trying to get them to focus on spiritual things. Then second, that, that they did not yet perceive nor yet understand that perceiving is really about perception. How you perceive a thing becomes your reality. And I've talked about that before. I'll come back to it in just a second. And then once I thinking different and seeing different, then I have a different understanding. Right? Once I, I, I'm thinking differently about it. 
and I'm seeing differently about it. Now I have a different understanding. And God wants us constantly questioning, are, are you still thinking the way you used to think? Are you thinking about things the way you used to think about them? Are you perceiving and seeing things the same way you used to see them? And then finally, are that, is that leading you to the same place of understanding? That at some point or another, you can't be around fire and not get hot. Y'all ain't going to talk to me in this place. You can't be around a dirty car, rub up against it, and you ain't going to get some dirt that rub off on you. Proximity is about availability. <laughs> and when you're in pro close proximity, what's on them starts to rub off on you. Here it is. How you come into the house of the Lord and some of this ain't rubbed off on you yet? To where your thinking is still the same. Your perception, now you see everything the same, and you don't understand that what the devil meant for bad. I wish I had some Bible readers. That, that, that what the devil meant for bad, can't God turn it and work it for good? Y'all didn't like that. Come here, Joseph, that what you meant for evil. Y'all thought y'all was just throwing me in a pit. Y'all thought y'all was just hating on me, but little did you know what you meant for evil. God has worked it for the good, and when I get to the new place of understanding, I see God in everything. And when I see God in everything, I stop giving Satan credit for anything. Y'all ain't hearing me in this place. So the first one is about our head. Your reasoning, your thinking, your perception, how you see things, and your understanding. That's the calculus, how the reason and perception come together to arrive at the place of understanding. Right? Understanding. That's, that's the head. And then he said, is your heart still heart? And the heart. We'll talk about that, that in the next slide. I want to dig deep into that. And then the third thing is your eyes you do not see. I want you to think about all the things that God has let you see with your natural eyes. We ain't even getting deep yet. We ain't even getting super spiritual, Snor. All we simply saying is, what have you seen? Maybe somebody needs some evidence. I dare you pull out your phone, turn on the camera function. And when you pull out your phone and turn on the camera function, and you see that ain't no tubes hooked up to your nose. Y'all ain't hearing me in this place. When you see ain't no machines in the background beeping, y'all ain't hearing me. A ain't nothing else helping you breathe, inflating, and deflating to keep oxygen flowing through. Y'all ain't hearing me in this place that you got enough to see all. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me in this place. I saw what some of y'all were driving up to the church in. Y'all ain't going to help me. I see what some folks got on their body right now. When it used to be orange jumpsuits, y'all ain't going to help me in this place. When it used to be some other clothes. I got all the evidence to see around me that God has done great things in my life. Not only what you see, God like you got ears to hear. You ain't heard my goodness. You ain't heard the testimony of Mother Richardson when we start praising God. All the, she waving her hand right now. All the stuff that I done been through and God has brought me through. All the testimonies you've heard of miracles, uh, signs. I'm looking at Mother Tennant right now. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for. I'm, I, I heard what they said to Mother Tennant that it'd be six months before she talked, before she walked. But I heard the voice of the Lord. Lord, say in six days uh, she'd be talking uh, and she walked out of the hospital don't tell me what God can't do God has said you done heard enough you done seen enough to where you can trust me and believe me and my word God said I got some stuff that ought to be happening in your head some things that ought to be happening in your heart. But then through your natural perception of seeing and hearing, there is an abundance of evidence all around you. But then this final thing, this final thing, we coming back here, we're going to shout in about 10 minutes, nine minutes. This last thing, this last thing, when you go through things, when things don't work out the way you want in your life, when Jesus is speaking to you, this is what you got to ask yourself. Does the devil do everything he can to take my remembrance? To take my memory? To get me so stuck in the paralysis 
of analysis that I don't do nothing but stay there thinking, wondering when God said it's time to go. It's time to move. Here it is. Don't you know the devil does everything he can to attack what you remember about God? Has anybody else had the experience that while you were going through, every now and then you had to do like Samson and just shake yourself? I need some Bible readers who understand what, what, what would happen. And see, every time some stuff would break out in Samson's life, when they would attack him and the Philistines would, would come in, it'd be almost overwhelming. And then something would happen. He would remember who was on his side. I wish I had some Bible readers. He, he would remember the God that had said, I'm going to be with you and I, I got your back. He, he would remember, then all of a sudden, he'd shake himself. And as he shook himself, his power and his strength comes back. What are you saying, Pastor Bacchus? That every now and then you got to spiritually shake yourself to remember who God is, to remember whose side you're on, to remember that God has said no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that Jesus has said I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And what the devil wants you to do is forget your faith, forget what God has done, Done, that the same God who kept you then is the same God. I wish I had some help from somebody who would look back over their life and think on all that God has done. There is an abundance of evidence. You just got to remember what God has already done. Oh, I said, y'all still don't get it. Now, 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 now that, 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 those are the seven tools. Now, I want to put it in this context. As we just read, after verse 18, when Jesus gets into a dialogue with the disciples. This is the context of it. This is the context. Jesus is saying, why are you worried about natural things when I'm challenging you on spiritual purposes and plans? And I want us to think about, in our own Christian journey, how many times is it our focus and emphasis on natural things that derails our progress? that gets us distracted, that pulls us away from what God is trying to do in our lives. Now think about it. In verses 1 through 10, you just saw Jesus have compassion on a multitude of people. I ain't talking about just a few folks. 4,000. And according to the patriarchy that sometimes comes forth, you only see the people represented as men. So when you see 4,000 men, it ain't even talking about if there were women and children who were accompanying the men to hear the message of Jesus. So you do the math, the average size of a, a household is about three and a half. I don't know how you got a half, but, but we'll run with it for right now. But with three and a half, let's call it four. So four times four is 16. Four times three is 12. So you do the math between 12,000 potentially and 16,000 people. Now, this is what it is. This is why I think Jesus gets frustrated with us as his disciples, as believers in Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, why would I care about 4,000 people, many of whom are shouting and celebrating me today, but a few days from now, they're going to be shouting, crucify him. The folks that I'm feeding today going to forget about me tomorrow. And this is what Jesus is saying, that if I've done stuff for people who you know ain't good, y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Who you know ain't right, who you know don't love me or care nothing about me, how much more am I going to take care of you? Somebody missed that. It's because we're dealing with issues of trauma. We don't love ourselves. So because we don't love ourselves, I can't receive the love of Jesus Christ. But I've come to break that curse today in the name of Jesus and say that God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross when it should have been you and it should have been me. Now, here it is. I got to know if God loves me knowing everything he knows about me. I'm about to shout all by myself. 
I'm going to have a praise party all by myself. Because see, God knows stuff about you that don't nobody know. The stuff that you forgot, trying to forget, and never think of again. Yet, God who sits on high and looks down low, who neither sleeps nor slumbers, he's seen everything. And he told me to tell you, I still love you. I still care about you. I still sent my son. I still wake you up every morning. I still touch you with my divine finger of love. That I still got enough grace. That I still got enough mercy that I still got enough of everything that you need because I love you that much black folks we gotta break out of that because everybody else on love does don't mean we can't love ourselves you ought to love yourself so much that people get jealous because you don't love them the way you love yourself. You ought to know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. God said, let us make them in our image. You ain't looking at no junk. God don't make no junk. God don't make no mess. God put his best in me. and ain't nothing you can say to disqualify it, to take it. The Bible says the gift of God are without repentance. If he did it, ain't nothing you can do about it. He loves me. He cares about me. Listen. I got two, three minutes. Y'all sit down. Y'all about to mess me up. This is what's happening. Jesus is like, why you think I'm going to be more concerned about a multitude I don't know? I had compassion on them. Y'all my dogs. Can I put it in vernacular somewhere that y'all can get it? Y'all my kinfo. Y'all family. Why would I take care of everybody else and not take care of my own people? First thing. Second thing is, you just saw what I did with so many people with only seven loads. Hold on. You just took seven and fed at least 4,000, particularly maybe 12 or 16,000. And Jesus is like, why is you tripping? You may not have everything that you want, but you got what you need. I'm preaching today in here. Jesus is saying, quit worrying about what you don't have and just give me what you got and trust in my ability to break it, to bless it, and to multiply it. Is there anybody that can testify that I ain't always had enough, but God had enough to do what he needed to do and God has made a way out of no way. God has put food on my table. God has given me peace when I thought I was going to lose it all. He's given me a peace that surpasses all understanding. God said you worried about the wrong things. Why are you focused on one loaf of bread when I took seven and fed 4,000? Don't you know that if you just put it in my hand, that's the problem. You're too busy trying to hold it in your hand rather than putting it in the hand of the one who can do something about it. Don't you know that God stepped out onto the abyss of nothing and spoke and before you know it there was light separating the night from the day. God spoke and vegetation began to come forward. Fish begin to populate the sea. Birds begin to occupy the air. Every green article that come forth came because God said it and if God said it God can do it. Why would God do it for everybody else and not do it for you too? You ain't never had enough. You ain't never been smart enough. Some of us avoided some cases that we should have called. It wasn't our lawyer was that good. Just by the grace of God, I serve a counselor who's never lost a case. I serve a doctor who's never lost a patient. I just got to know whose side I'm on and know that everything going to be all right. Just take your one loaf. 
I've come to tell somebody maybe one dollar but one dollar in the hands of God is more than a million dollars in the hands of the world y'all not hearing me I may have one song that I can sing but I'm going to sing my song I may not have a spotlight but I got a flashlight and this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go because God can take my little and turn it Can you hear the frustration of Jesus? Y'all worry about the wrong things. You forgot how much I love you. You forgot what I've already done when you didn't have enough to start off with. It ain't never been about what you had. It's about who you gave it to. Ooh, bless the name of the Lord. It ain't never been about what you had. It was about who you trusted it with, who you gave it to. That's why Malachi 3, y'all don't like it when I start talking about money. But the Lord says, try me now and this says the Lord. Here it is. Frustration to Jesus. So why am I going to take care of everybody else but I don't take care of you? How can I perform these miracles when they had less than what you got, relatively speaking, per capita. One low for seven people is a whole lot better than seven for 4,000. You do the math yourself. And then finally, I, I hear Jesus frustrated because in the midst of the tragedy, the midst of the confusion, he's like, why you always forget who I am? Why you always lose your mind? Why you always forget who I've been? And I want us to look, look, look. Go, go, go to the slide where it breaks down the heart. The, I mean, the head, the heart. And we're doing this and we're done. I got three minutes. I got three minutes. I got three minutes. I'm for real trying to get out of here real quick, y'all. Real quick. Because I done shouted. I'm good. I done sweated. Now I got to go. Amen. Here we go. I want to talk about your mind. Next time you go through something. Next time you feel like the Lord is trying to speak to you. Next time you have questions in your soul. Before you just rush in head first. Pause for the cause. Long enough to take a step back. Say, Lord, I know how I normally would understand. How I normally would perceive. How I normally would think about something. But Lord, help me get out of my natural thinking. Help me elevate above my natural mode into my spiritual purposes. And the first thing that you want to do in your mind is they messed up. Why do you reason because you have no bread? Why is your reasoning determined by natural things based on what you got and who you are rather than recognizing who God is and what God got? The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That I shall meet all of your needs according to my riches and glory. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That he who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we can ask, think, or imagine. God is saying, why are you tripping about bread? Don't you know who I am? I'm the bread maker. Matter of fact, not only do I make bread, I make the wheat that gives you the bread. Matter of fact, I own the soil that the wheat was planted. Y'all ain't talking to me. I control the rain as it falls from the heaven to irrigate the land that produces the crop, that produces the flour, that produces the bread that you stand in need of. God saying you worry about the wrong thing. Quit worrying about bread when I control the rain and the soil. <laughs> oh, that's good preaching right there, y'all. That's good preaching. So take a step back and start to process it through your mind. Do I have natural reasoning about a spiritual matter? Quit bringing a knife to a gunfight. I knew that against some of y'all. Quit trying to handle spiritual things in a natural way. Understand that God has given you a different level of reasoning in this season in your life. That God has given you all of the reasons. And the evidence, you just got to choose to use them in a reasonable way. <laughs> to reason within yourself, God's way is better than my way. God's way is better than the natural way. But then once I do that, the second thing is this is where it really starts, y'all. I promise I'm going to rush through. But it starts with perception. How do you see a thing? I want you to think about the latest thing that you've been through. Are you seeing it the same way? Are you seeing the hand of God in the midst of your situation? 
Are you seeing that although I didn't, anybody have the experience and I look back over my life, I got hindsight is 2020. Anybody ever look back at your life and laugh about some stuff that had you flustered, frustrated, ready to give up and throw in the towel? And you look back like, I was tripping off of that. I was scared from that. I was acting a fool like I forgot who God was. And now it's a laughable matter. But it starts with your perception because your perception determines your reception. <laughs> that, that how I perceive a thing is how I'm going to receive a thing. If I think somebody don't like me every time they say something, I'm hearing it. Y'all ain't praying with me as if they don't like me. Y'all didn't like that one. I got another one for you. You ever dated somebody that you knew was wrong and everybody around you knew they was wrong? But because you were so in love, y'all ain't going to help me. Too many of y'all waving y'all hands, telling on y'all selves. I'm going to just turn around. I don't even want to see. But what happened? What happened? It wasn't until that person, that hold they had on you was broken. Come on, y'all. When the hold was broken, stuff that looked one way before looked a whole different way now. I wish I had some help up in here. And then you saw one thing, and then you start thinking about another thing, and you, before you know it, they ain't loved me this whole time. They've been lying to me from the beginning. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. But because you were so in love and so caught up, you couldn't be able to receive what they really were saying and doing because your perception had been skewed by what you wanted as opposed to what was really there. See, what spiritual perception allows me to see what God has said is really there. Even when my eyes can't quite see it, my heart don't quite get it, I've learned to see how God wants me to see. If I perceive positive, I will receive positive. If I perceive negative, I will receive negative. It is about perception. That's just Jesus calling because his word is so good. Jesus, Jesus is like, preach on, pastor, preach on. I ain't worried about no phone going off. Preach on, pastor. How I reason and how I perceive leads to the place of understanding. Because we shall understand it better. <laughs> y'all have figured out the by and by. <laughs> that, 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 that when you look back over it, that's what that by and by mean. That, that sometimes you just got to get through to look back. <laughs> And when I understand that God's hand is on my life, I ain't worried about what I'm going through because I know I'm going to get through. And when I get through, I'm gonna know, I know that I'm going to be better than when I started. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be wiser. I'm going to be smarter. I'm going to have more trust in the Lord. So now I got spiritual understanding so I ain't losing my mind while I'm going through what I'm going through. Because I got that peace that surpasses all understanding. It is about your, 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 your head. Then it's about your heart. A hardened heart is an unbelieving, unconvinced heart. Is your heart still hardened? Still hardened is suggestive of a progressive a process, progress, right? That if something is still hardened, that means it's still in the same state that it was when I found it. And here's the real question. Is your heart in the same state it was when Jesus found you? Are, are, are you still in a place of unbelief? Where I heard what pastor said. I heard what they said on the prayer line, but it just don't make sense to me. <laughs> I, I just don't feel like it's going to work out. I just don't feel. How much are we driven by what we feel? As I told us last week, God ain't in the feeling business. God is like, I'm here on business. If I said it, I mean it. If I said it, I'm going to do it. Can't nobody convince me. If God said he going to bless you, I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what your sister say. I don't care what your brother say, your mama say, your daddy say. If God say he going to do it, God just going to do it, y'all. And we got to get to the place where we're convinced in our hearts. So what happens is when I receive a word, faith comes by hearing. Hearing by what? The word of God. Listen, listen. Listen to what God has said. Faith comes by hearing. By hearing what? Hearing what you got to say? Hearing what Dr. Phil got to say? 
hearing what Kamala, Biden, or Trump got to say? Hearing what Oprah got to say? God respect them hearing what the Obamas have to say? Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. No, but hearing by the word of God. Now, here it is that the word of God is like a double-edged sword that it cuts going in and coming out. The word of God shall, shall, shall never return void, right? That, that the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word will stand, will endure. So watch this. All this word you heard, if it ain't making a difference in your life, maybe it's because your heart is hard. Because it's not an issue of the seed. The seed going to grow wherever it's planted. <laughs> the question is, has it been allowed to take root and take hold in your heart? Because when it takes root and hold in your heart, there ought to be some evidence. How sad would I be to put collards in the ground and in harvest season, I'm still looking at the same brown soil? What if God evaluated our lives like that? How many times have I spoken to you? How many times have I answered your prayers? How many times have those deep, intriguing questions of the word of God been ringing in your mind, but you came to the house of the Lord unscripted, unannounced, but God sent a word to speak to your situation? Now, God spoke that word to your situation, but you go back home and live in the same way, doing the same thing operating in unbelief and you frustrated because God is looking like I done done everything I need to do. I don't think you're going to get more word any other church in America. I put my word up against anybody. I ain't afraid of nobody in the pulpit. I can do what they do, but they can't do what I do. That's why I'm such a bad boy. Can I just tell the truth about it? I can get academic, I can get intellectual, I can get hood. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. And I can holler with the best of them. Don't let the Holy Ghost get loose and get a hold. I ain't afraid of nothing or nobody. So what I know is there's too much word going forth to not be enough fruit. How you know it ain't enough fruit, Pastor? How you know you're still preaching to a lot of hard hearts? Because I'm embarrassed every time we have new members announced and don't nobody stand up for their first time coming. If you threw a party, had made all the preparations, done everything you can, and ain't nobody show up. Now I want to ask a question. What better evidence that the word has been making a difference in your life than you telling somebody else? To bring them to get that same word, to get that same experience. I knew y'all was going to get quiet. That's why I saved my shout for the last one. I'm nine minutes over. I'm nine minutes over. We're trying to get 1230. 1230. Give me six minutes. The natural senses and remembrance. The final thing. I'm closing when I tell you this. Jesus says, having eyes do you not see. Having ears, do you not hear? I don't even need to talk about that too much. I want you to take a moment right now. Just take five, ten seconds. And just think about everything you've seen, God. Now, I ain't talking about in the spirit. I ain't asking you to get it super deep. But just think about what you've seen with your eyes God do for you. Come on, for real, y'all. This ain't for, for dramatic flair. I really want you to take a moment and think about what you've seen and what you've heard. Stuff can't nobody take away from you. I know what I saw. I know what I heard. When the doctor said Mother Richardson got bleeding that they can't stop and they can't get to and don't know what they going to do. But yet I see her in the sanctuary today. How many testimonies we, we've heard about what God has done? How much word you've heard? How many prayers have made a difference in your life? How many sermons have met you at the point of your need? How many times you, times you heard that song that lifted up your bowed down head, that gave you strength to run on and fight on? How much have you seen and how much have you heard to where you still ain't convinced? 
that God is who he, yeah, who he said he is. I'm on my way now, y'all. I feel good. I feel good. Uh, the, the, the ver by virtue of the fact that you can think back over some things you've seen in your life. Uh, and the fact that you can remember some things that you've heard in your life. Uh, you ought to be able to tell the Lord, thank you. Because if it was left up to the enemy... He would have robbed you of every experience, of everything that you've seen the Lord do in your life. But I'm so glad that in God's infinite foresight and design that he decided to give me a mind that can remember what he's done for me. And I'm about to get happy all by myself, uh, but I believe there's a few witnesses in the sanctuary uh, who don't mind standing up and testifying uh, that I've seen too much, um, I've been through too much uh, for me to turn back now. Um, when I think of the goodness of the Lord uh, and all that he's done, uh, I can't keep it uh, to myself. Um, I don't want to be uh, an ungrateful believer. Uh, you don't know uh, like I know um, what the Lord uh, has done for me. Uh, what he's kept me from. Uh, what he's brought me through. Uh, the ways he's made uh, out of no way. Uh, the time the doctors uh, didn't know what to do. Uh, but I I'm still, uh, I'm still here. Uh, is there anybody uh, that got a, I'm still here? Uh, I got a, I'm still here, praise. Uh, Cause the truth is, uh, I should have been dead and gone, uh, sleeping in my grave. Uh, but uh, oh, the Lord, uh, He made uh, all death behave, uh, and I'm glad. I'm glad about it. Um, I got to leave you now. Uh, but the last thing I want to tell you uh, is next time you're going through, uh, next time you're wondering if you can make it through, uh, just take a trip uh, 2,000 years ago uh, and march up the Via Dolorosa uh, and march up the hill called Calvary. Uh, and when you get to the foot of the hill, uh, just lift up your eyes uh, and see your Savior uh, high and lifted up. Uh, they put nails in his hands uh, and rivets in his feet. Uh, but here's the good news uh, what I never want you to forget. Uh, Jesus said uh, that's where they messed up. Uh, he said, because if I be lifted up, uh, I'll draw men uh, unto me. Uh, that's the good news, y'all. Uh, never forget uh, one Friday evening. Uh, he died uh, so that we can live again. Uh, you may go through uh, your Friday night experience, uh, but remember Sunday's coming. Uh, Friday may get rough, uh, but Sunday's coming. Uh, Friday may get tough, uh, but Sunday's coming. Uh, centurions giving eulogies, uh, but Sunday's coming. Uh, the moon may drip down in blood, uh, but Sunday's coming. Uh, the earth may rock and reel uh, like a drunken man, uh, but Sunday's coming. Uh, Saturday may get rough. Uh, Saturday night may get rough, uh, but never forget uh, that early Come on, Sunday morning. Y'all don't know what to get excited about. I said it. Sunday morning. He got up. He got up. He got up. With a It's 12.30. We got to go. We got to go. Next time you go through. Next time you got a question. Is the Lord speaking to me? 
Is the Lord saying something to me? Is the Lord trying to get me to a new place? Trying to get me to a new level in him? Let me not run back to how I think all the time. But Lord, take control of my mind. <laughs> Give me spiritual understanding. Help me understand I ain't mad at them, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. Lord, help me understand that just because somebody had a bad day don't mean they a bad person. Lord, help me understand that you love me too much to leave me or forsake me. Lord, bring me to the place of understanding that what the devil meant for bad, God, is working it for the good. I just got to get through to the other side. You just got to get through. You just got to get through. You just got to get through. Lord, fix my heart to where I don't need to be convinced anymore. Lord, I, 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 I sense your frustration. You keep showing me miracle after miracle. You keep restoring my peace. You keep bringing back my joy. You keep allowing your presence to be with me so I don't feel alone. So Lord, out of gratitude and appreciation, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew within me a right spirit. Lord, as you promised in Ezekiel, take the heart of stone and replace it with the heart of flesh. Lord, I believe would help my unbelief. Lord, fix my heart to believe and receive your word. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I, whatever you do, don't take my memory. Lord, Lord, whatever you do, don't let me forget that I've already seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, whatever you do, don't let me forget how I've seen you show up and show out time and time again. You ain't always worked it out the way I wanted or when I were wanted. Let's be honest about it. But, but Lord, you've always worked it out. You've always been present in the midst of it all. So, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we got ears. We've heard the testimony. But I was going back listening to some old sermons, hearing stuff that I prophetically spoke, and it's come to pass. Lord, we thank you for what we've heard. We thank you that every now and then we hear your voice telling us it's going to be all right. Keep your head up. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Trust in me. Lord, we thank you for what we've heard. And now, Lord, we thank you for the gift of remembrance. Help us never to forget how faithful you've been. How many ways you've made out of no way. How many times you showed up and showed out over and over and over and over again. So, Lord, I'm believing you right now. That doctor is still a liar who said that ain't nothing even God can do about that cancer. He's a liar in the name of Jesus. God, you got the final word. God, I know what I heard. I know what I heard. I know what I have believed. I, I know in whom I have believed. So, Lord, help me to remember times I prayed for people that had a 50-50 chance of living. 50-50 chance. You know how, how it is for the pastor to have to pray for somebody? And you don't know what God is going to do, but you got to muster up enough faith to say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, don't let my lack of faith mess up this miracle. But I want to tell you, God keeps his word. Lord, we thank you that you're a healer, miracle worker. That you do signs and wonders. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, in the name of Jesus, break the hardness of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, help us to arrive at new places of belief, trust, and confidence in you. Lord, help us to use spiritual reasoning to help figure out these things. 
You've given us spiritual clues, spiritual breadcrumbs. The evidence is in abundance all around us. So now, Lord, hear our sincere prayer. We don't want to frustrate you anymore. We don't want to be focused on natural things when you got us on supernatural levels. Lord, through the foolishness of preaching, we pray that this word has made a difference in somebody's life. And we believe it to be so. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and say amen, amen, and amen. Y'all sit down. Everybody sit down. Sit down if you can. Sit down if you can. I want to do something real quick. I'm gonna do something real quick if today is your day and you want to join the church you just lift up your hand and i'm gonna walk you down the aisle or if you don't want to come down now you can see one of the deacons after service our brother here come on come on come on down come on sister beverly walk with them sister beverly you'll walk down with them come on let's receive our brother is there another today is there another today come on he's been coming for a while he's been coming for a while is there another Say, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to join this, the Mount Ali Baptist Church. Maybe you just need prayer. Is there one? Is there another? We got one. We got one. Is there another? Is there another today? Come on. We don't have a lot of time. If that's you, just come on. Just come on. Wherever you are, just come on. Wherever you are. We don't have a lot of time today. If that's you, just come on. Come on. Wherever you are. Wherever you are right now. T. Purple. You want to join? Seven? You ready? We'll take the babies too. Amen. Amen. This brother's been coming for the last few weeks and gave his testimony about how every sermon has spoken to him in his situation. He showed up at Sunday school today, and we are super excited about what God is about to do. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Don't let this opportunity pass you up. We see there was room, and there was one to come. Let's give God some praise for our brothers. Thank you. For the deacons, deaconess, one of you got to stay up here so we can receive him in. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Y'all can stay up here. I'm listening to y'all, letting y'all rush me. Y'all know I don't care about time. No, I am blaming you, for real. I wouldn't care. I really wouldn't. I don't care. I ain't got nothing else to do on Sunday. This the Lord's, this the Lord's day. I do everything I want any other day of the week. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. So this the Lord's day. We're going to receive our brother who has come. What y'all singing? Y'all just playing music. Everybody just vibe out. Just vibe out. Just vibe out. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt on this day. Lord, I want to challenge us. We're going to end service. We're going to do the medical moment on first Sunday. If you, You're going to be here. Next time you come back, I got you. Next time. What was it about? About Alzheimer's. Remembrance, amen, remembrance. Listen, you can stand against it. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. I tell the story, when I had COVID, I had long haul syndrome, fogginess, I couldn't remember anything. I literally believe I prayed my way back. I believe God back. That, that, that's different than Alzheimer's, but I stood on God's word. Lord, give me a sound mind because my mind wasn't sound. I couldn't remember stuff. I was forgetting stuff. Stuff didn't make sense. I, when I would talk, I'd feel dumb to myself because I knew what I was capable of. But God will hear your prayer. God will heal. God will restore. Now, this is the thing that the mind is a muscle, so at some point it's going to wear out. But you can preserve it by exercising it, by using it, by praying over it. Some stuff is just hereditary that we just got to deal with. That, that sin and things in this world, that ain't going to stop us from praying. 
People be on their deathbed and the doctor said they about to die. I still be in the name of Jesus. Lord, you got the last word. You got the final say. And until God says otherwise, that's just who I am. That ain't good. It don't work for everybody. But I'm going to believe God until the last breath. Because what I have discovered, Denise is right here. We were praying for her sister. And it was Travis, her nephew, who gave the testimony. We prayed, but God still worked it out. God didn't heal her. God took her, but God took her without pain. And to hear the testimony that although we prayed for one thing, he said God did answer our prayers, but God got the final way on how it's answered, saints of God. But don't let nothing stop you from praying and believing. I tell people all the time, why even risk it if God was going to do it because you're afraid to ask? I don't want to make it to heaven and see somebody who could have been healed but because I listened to the doctor's diagnosis, I decided not to pray. Because I had questions, I, I just gave up on it. No, I don't want that left on my record. I'm going to believe God until God says enough is enough. Come on up. <laughs> into my blessed rest. Let's receive now our church clerk, Sister Grace Bradley. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. This afternoon we have Taekwon Bethea, who is coming to Mount Ali on his Christian experience. Amen. Well, let's give God some praise for Brother Taekwon Bethea. We didn't have some Betheas in this church before. Amen. So you right, you might have some cousins who've been here before. Amen. So we are so grateful, Brother Taquan. He has a great spirit. Uh, he's been here worshiping. He just said, I, I remember how he said he found us in Google, right? How'd you how'd you find the church? He just happened to walk past. I'm trying to tell you, when the anointing is strong on the place, people will walk by and be drawn in and don't even know why. I'm trying to tell you what God has done. So we're so grateful. You've already confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and already been baptized. Well, we just want, are excited to receive you into our local fellowship of the Mount Ali Baptist Church. We go through a formal process uh, just for technicality reasons. We receive you. This ain't about your salvation or nothing. Just about your acceptance into this local organization, this local, local branch of Zion. So, Brother Deacons, you've heard the testimony of Brother Taekwon Bathia, who has come on his Christian experience to become a member of the Mount Ali Baptist Church. What would be your pleasure? Good, Brother Pastor, I so move that Brother Taekwon Bathia be accepted on his Christian experience, and after successful completion of the new membership, he will be given a right under fellowship and accepted into the church with all rights and privileges. I second that motion. Amen. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor show by the usual voting sign of aye. aye. Any abstentions? Any opposed? No, because ain't nobody mad but the devil. I need you to help me give God some Holy Ghost praise for our brother who has decided to unite with us for the Taekwondo deal. Amen. Y'all show him some love as we get ready to get out of here. Amen. Amen. Standing all standing on your feet all over the sanctuary. Standing on, on your feet all over the sanctuary. So good to see each and every one of you. So good to see each and every one of you. Were you blessed by today's worship? Were you blessed? Were you glad that you're here? Glad that you're here. Listen, I've been, I, I, I'm trying my best, y'all. Y'all got to meet me. Y'all got to meet me. I'm trying my best so that we can be our best. Amen. Tell somebody. I'm giving y'all five weeks, five weeks, we're going to pack out the hour power and we're going to start packing out again our 1045 come September. I'm asking you to be in prayer for me. I'm going to be praying, working hard, laboring in the Lord, laboring in the word to bring you a word every Sunday that speaks to your situation. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to go from this place and I'm going to do what the devil will never do. Leave us alone. That's right. Sister Felicia, no, we're going to do what the devil will never do, and that's leave you alone. Amen. I hope that 
you spoke to somebody, smiled at somebody today, somebody hugged you, somebody loved on you, somebody told you how good it was to see you today. That's my hope and my prayer for you. Amen. Let's look now to the Lord in prayer. Let's look now to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for just being the great God that you are. Who else but you, oh God? We love how you just got all by yourself. Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the worship today. We thank you for your word that we believe has made us better. Your word, oh God, that has helped us to, to see the difference you've made in our lives. We thank you that we don't see things the way we used to see them. We don't think about things the way we used to think. And we don't understand and experience things the way we used to. Lord, we thank you for changing our hearts. We thank you for the evidence of your word that is in our hearts. It's in how we live. It's in how we carry ourselves. Most importantly, it's in how we treat other people and how we treat you. Now, Lord, we thank you that you've given us enough evidence to see with our natural eyes enough evidence to hear with our natural ears and lord we thank you for the gift of remembrance and when the devil would come and try to so overwhelm us that we forget about who you are bring to remembrance bring to remembrance bring to remembrance is our prayer lord all of the great things that you have done now, Lord, as we go from your gathered people to your scattered people, rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. And we promise to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. It's in the mighty, marvelous, miraculous, majestic, and magnanimous name of Jesus the Christ. All those who could said together, amen, amen, and amen again. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Hug somebody. Tell them I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you next week. Same place. Same time.